Okay. Squeeze it a little like that. Start pouring. Should have done that before, but decided to put a piece of tape over the front action screw hole. Okay, try that again. When I first opened it up, I thought maybe there wouldn't be enough, but there appears to be plenty, so I'm just going to use the rest of it to fill in these areas here.
Now it does say that after approximately 10 minutes or so, uh, air bubbles will start to float to the top and they can be popped with just a hot needle. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes and then come back and take a look. So it's been about 10 minutes and I'm just gonna take this tool and heat it with the torch and pop a couple of the air bubbles. Uh, a couple of things, I think I actually filled it just slightly too much. So um, all of the center section of the skeleton appears to be covered. I can see the cross pieces in the internal skeleton, but um, there's a slight bulge in the material that it's lifted just a tiny bit up above the surfaces of the front and then also the back right in front of the recoil lug. So there's probably just a little too much of the stabilizing compound in there. At first I was worried there wouldn't be enough. There's a little bit left over. So there's more than enough to do the job and uh, shouldn't have any worries about coming up short, which is great. So I'm just gonna heat this up, pop a couple of these bubbles and then let it sit. These are really pretty small bubbles, maybe, I don't know, the size of a the end of a ballpoint pen or smaller. So, not really too worried about it. I am going to have to do a little bit of sanding after everything dries just to float the barrel down through the center. I considered getting a heat gun out and strafing it. I didn't do that because in the instructions it says that you should not apply post heat. So I'm just going to let it cure at room temperature. So just a little closer look. It's pretty hard to touch on camera, but hopefully you'll be able to kind of get an idea of what's in there. I'm not too worried about these areas that appear to be overfilled right here around the action screw because I'm going to be grinding that out for the bedding compound anyway. So I just tried to fill them up close to the top there. So all that's left now is just to wait. The stabilizer compound has now had time to fully cure. You'll see a few air bubbles in there. There's one right there in the center. A couple others. They're all really quite small as far as the air bubbles go. Um, after Handling it now that the stabilizer is dried, I did notice that it is a lot more rigid on the fore end. So it, I think that it'll work perfectly fine for free floating the barrel. I'm excited about that. Uh, the second thing I noticed is that the compound did shrink back or shrink just a little bit. Um, this area right here I thought was maybe just a little bit too full when I first poured the compound in, but as it dried, it shrunk a little bit. And now this area here is basically perfectly flat on there. That being said, if I would thought about the fact that it would shrink a little bit, I would have filled this area and this area just a little bit more in there. Um, I think it'll, everything will work out fine because I still need to grind that action area out and then fill it in with the steel reinforced bedding compound. So I'm sure everything will work out fine there. but. If I would have known about the shrinking, I would have filled those voids around the front action screw just a little bit more. 
Um, the instructions are clear that this stabilizing compound should only be used in conjunction with bedding the rifle. Um, and that makes sense to me because if you think about it, this area here has been reinforced and this area here has been reinforced, but this slot right here where the recoil lug goes is still the same as it was originally. So that's going to be the weak point um, along here right now. And obviously that will get filled in some with the bedding compound when we bed the rifle. Um, and so that will help to strengthen that. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is just take a dowel and a piece of sandpaper and clean this front area up a little bit. Just mostly along this ridge to make sure that there isn't any little pieces of plastic that I melted or anything like that um, sticking up that would come in contact with the barrel. So I'll do a little bit of sanding and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Here's a look now that I've had a chance to clean it up with some sandpaper. I used 150 grit and 220 grit sandpaper. I wrapped the sandpaper around a dowel and I worked back and forth down the center line of the stock until I got back down to the internal skeleton. Then I just used the 220 to clean it up a little bit from there. The sanding did expose the little air bubble pockets that you see. Those are just cosmetic. Um, the overall strength of the stock feels really good. So uh, in conclusion, the match grade synthetic stock stabilizer was easy to use and did a great job at strengthening the forend of the stock. Um, as I mentioned before, it's really just the first step. It's not really meant to be used by itself. So the next part for me is going to be installing aluminum pillars around the action screws and then the full length bedding. So thanks for watching.